What game has sold over 10 million copies, has over 20 expansions for it? Keep guessing, yep, keep guessing, keep... Yes, Carcassonne. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the Bottled Imp. Exploring the realms of fantasy is exactly what we do. My name is Ken Boyter and today we're going to take a look at the hugely popular tile placing game Carcassonne. It's two to five players, it's ages seven plus and it takes about 35-40 minutes to play. Now I've known about Carcassonne for years, I think it came out first came out in the year 2000 or 2001. I've seen it in shops, in bookshops. It's a very popular game and I hadn't really got involved with it until now. So what do you get in the box? <laughs> In the box you get 72 tiles, you get a scoring board, you also get a bunch of meeples, I think there's 40, although they call them followers, uh, different colours, they're exactly the same, different colours, there's 8 of them, uh, you will be using one to actually score, so you actually have 7 to play with in the actual game. Plus you also get two mini expansions in this, as I say there's loads of expansions, in this edition, which I believe is the 2014 or 15 edition, they've decided to put two mini expansions. That's the Abbot and also the River. And the River is basically just different tiles that have a big, big river running through them. I'm not going to be explaining the mini expansions. I will let you discover that for yourselves. I'm just going to be talking about the actual base game. So how do you play and what's the objective? To win the game, you need to score as many points as possible. The person at the end of the game with as many points after you've scored everything is the winner. And you get points by laying tiles and starting to build features. Completed features such as roads, which are these. There's a monastery that you can build monasteries. And also there are cities that you build. You'll get points for those. There's also points for fields, and that's if you claim fields. Now, I'm not going to go into the scoring of fields because, again, we're in the rules. It just says to play scoring the roads, the monasteries, and also the cities. The fields seem to be a little bit more advanced, although, really, it's not that advanced. So, I'm just going to be talking about the roads, monasteries, and the cities. So, what you do is you'll be scoring points during the game plus after the game. For every road, monastery and city that you complete in the game, you'll get points for. When the game finishes, and it finishes by all the tiles being used up from the draw stack, you then score any unfinished road, monastery and city. And obviously if you're playing the fields, the fields. So on your turn, what you have to do is very simple. You take a tile from the draw stack and everybody takes it from one draw stack and then you simply place it down next to another one. Now I'm going to use this one because obviously I want to show you certain things. So say you've taken it off the top, you then have to place the tile next to, adjacent to any other tile on the board. Now this is the starting tile and you can tell it's the starting tile because there's a light C as opposed to the dark C's on all the other tiles. So you simply place the starting tile there, you draw the first player, draws their tile, and then they have to match it to expand the illustration. It's as simple as that. So for example, I could place this here because it's a road and a road. I could also place that here, it's a road and a road. And I can place that there because it's a road and a road. I can't place that here because there's a city, beginning of a city, and a field. Likewise, I couldn't just put a road down going nowhere, doesn't work. Plus, I can't put, say, a city next to a road, but what I can do is obviously put a city next to a city. Now, albeit that would be a very small city, but you still can do that. So basically, any legal move is that you're expanding the illustration. So for example, let's put that there. So you will simply lay your tile down. Now, you do have one more option on your go. Say I was the red, and I could if I wanted to, you don't have to every time, but when you lay a tile down, you can actually then place your meeple on it. And you place your meeple in various places. So for example, if I wanted to claim that road, I would place it next to that road. 
If I want to claim that road, I'll place it on top of that road, etc. etc. Now, if I want to claim a city, because there's also a city on this tile, I just place it on the city. And therefore, you will start to build that feature. You have claimed that feature or construction. So I'm going to put it on this road for this purposes. And then it would be someone else's go. Now, the next person, they might obviously put the road here. And again, they could start claiming that road. And you just build it up like that. Now, obviously, black. With this one, with roads, you can't claim the same road as someone else. So, for example, if the black, that's an illegal move. You can't place two of a different colour on the same road. Now, how do you score? Well, it's pretty simple. As I say, you'll be scoring in game. Now, when you do get points, you'll be moving your meeples up onto the scoreboard. And it goes all the way around to 50. And if you get all the way around to 50, which you will do, because it is quite a high scoring game, you simply lay your meeple down to denote that you've gone around the track once already. So that would be 51, 52 points, 53 points like that. So it's a really good, simple way of scoring. Now for a road, every completed road, now completed road, is a road that then obviously runs into a city or another building like that that actually finishes the road. Now anybody can, can play tiles anywhere that matches so another player might actually finish a road off and then they could claim this road. So for example if that was the case then red would score three points. You get one point per tile that the road is on. So for example, one, two, three. And then once a feature, road, monastery or city is completed, you take your meeple off and then you can reuse that meeple in the game. Now for example, this one, this road isn't finished. So that meeple is still on the board. And for example, let's have a look at cities. So a city, the way you would score a city is if you laid your tile there, let's say blue is going to claim this city, then what may happen is once that tile gets laid down, that city is complete, it's walled in. There's no other way that a city can be attached to that. So you get two points per tile that the city is on. So I'd get two, four, six, plus you get two points for every shield or coat of arms that is in your city so you might have two or three of those and those are two extra points so I'd get two four six plus two as the bonus and again you'd take your meeple off now what might happen with a city is somebody else might want to claim it so say for example that one landed there although actually that is a slightly illegal move just to point that out because look that city is being blocked off so that isn't actually <laughs> a legal move just to point that out but say it was just for the purposes of this review, and somebody else claimed that city, then you would actually share the points, so you'd get equal points. If, though, there was another blue or another red, whoever has the most meeples on that city would get all the points, and red would get nothing, for example. So blue would get all the points, and then they would put the meeples back into their stockpile. Now, the other way of scoring, as I say, is the monastery. Now, the monasteries are these tiles here and let's say green has actually managed to start building a monastery you get one point for every tile that you actually place or is placed around the monastery now again other players will be playing tiles down it doesn't have to be you that completes it so once it is completed you would then simply add them all up so that's one two three four five six seven eight and one point for the monastery that'd be nine and again you get your meeple back the other way that you score is at the end of the game so let's say for example there are a few things that weren't finished you do get points for uncompleted features so for example this one here, this road isn't finished. So, but you'd still get points. You get one, two, three points. So you get one point for every tile that that road actually builds. So blue would get three points. Black here would get one point because it is a little bit of a road. And let's say uh, the green didn't manage to finish the monastery. You'd still get one point 
per tile. So you'd get one, two, three, four, five, six points. And for cities, again, you would score, but this time it's half points. So you'd only get one point per tile. So it'd be one, two, plus the three there. And that's basically how you score. Now, as I say, there is a fields uh, advanced play where you would actually be laying meeples in the fields. And again, that'd be another way of scoring. And as I say, there's the ABBA expansion and also the river expansion. And that is how you play Carcassonne. What do I think? I think it's an amazing game. It's really good fun. It's brilliant. The components are excellent. It plays really well. There's a lot of playability. And it was the sort of game that I just want to play again and again and again. Totally recommend this game. I'm certainly going to be doing more reviews of the expansions. I'm going to be buying lots of the expansions. Check them out. Totally recommend Carcassonne. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching the Bottled Imps review of Carcassonne. As I say, fantastic game. You'll love it. You'll really, really enjoy it. And because it's a relatively small box, good for travelling, good to take on holiday. Thanks for watching. You can follow us on all the normal social media. What is it? Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. Although this is YouTube, so this is kind of weird. I just recommend that you watch something that you're already watching. Anyway, we've got lots of other reviews on our channel. Check them out. See you next time.